KAOS, the Linux distro that nobody asked me to review. Seriously, nobody's asked me to review it yet. Here we are. I've known about KAOS for quite some time now, but nobody, I repeat, nobody I know uses it or has used it in recent memory. Why? Well, it's rather odd. It's an Arch-based distro, but not really. It's a pure KDE distro, or is it a pure Qt distro? I'm not really sure. What I am sure of, though, is that it has this really cool little welcome app. I dig this. It also uses a custom version of the Calamares installer, which looks an awful lot like the one Manjaro uses, you know, the one with the uh, Office Suite selector thing. And another thing, it seems that KOS uses XFS, which is kind of funny because the SSD in the distro delves PC is 120 gigabytes, so XFS is kind of overkill, don't you think? Once we finished installing and reached the desktop, we're greeted with that nifty little welcome app again. But to be honest, it's a bit much. I'm a seasoned Linux user, and even I was a bit overwhelmed with all the options this thing has. And it seems to assume that there's a network connection, because some of the options like the entire wallpaper section didn't work because my network wasn't ready. The things that this welcome app can do were kind of strange, especially for the target user who can be a brand new Linux convert, but really ought to be a power user. One of the main goals of KAOS is to make the distro lightweight and streamlined, and I must say with an install size of 7.7 gigabytes, I'm not so sure. The memory usage though was a cool 707 megabytes in HTOP was reporting 60 tasks and 101 threads, which is remarkably low by the way. So this desktop is of course KDE, yet another acronym, and it has a very custom theme. I'm not really sure what to make of it to be honest, I like the icon set, but certain things like the window decorations are a little bit odd. The main desktop theme is called Midna, and it has a few derivatives like Midna Dark, which was really nice. And the overall styling is powered by Cavantum, so that's cool, I guess. One of the things that KAOS, and god I hate saying that over and over, actually promotes on their website is their selection of backgrounds, and I must say, the selection on offer is awesome. The default background though, the one with the flower, with all of these great backgrounds to choose from, why on earth did they choose this one as the default? So if I had to choose a word to call the selection of default pre-installed apps, I would choose chaos because it's a homonym and the app selection is just chaotic. It's just random, like random development tools, two seemingly random versions of KDE Marvel, and a random game tossed in for some extra flavor. And the game that they chose? K patience. And look at the multimedia selection, just why? So KAOS is a strictly 64-bit distro, more on that in just a little bit, and it uses kernel version 5.6.8 with 865 packages installed with Bash 5.0. This is Plasma 5.18.4 and KDE Frameworks 5.69, neither of those are the latest as of this video, and the theme is the aforementioned Midna. In the next segment, we try mounting my SSD card reader with EXFAT, external SSD, and my encrypted internal hard drive, which threw an error after mounting the drive, but afterwards was just fine. All those tests passed, and next up is the archive tests, all of which work just fine, and I did notice that there was a different color for each archive type. You guys know I love that. All of the audio files opened and played just fine, and all of the video files opened and played just fine too. Despite there being a wide variety of multimedia apps, they actually opened in pretty much the same application, which is cool. Out of the app images, Etcher was the only one that didn't open, throwing a GTK-related error in the terminal, which is a little strange. The flat rep file didn't work because KAOS doesn't use flat packs or snaps, only Pac-Man and its very own AUR-like copycat. So yeah, Chaos is Arch, but not really, similar to Manjaro? Kind of, but not really. As their website explains, KAOS diverges from Arch quite a bit. The biggest difference is that KAOS does not support 32-bit architecture at all. Remember that big debacle around Ubuntu a year or two ago talking about dropping 32-bit support? Well, you could try out KAOS and see how it feels like firsthand. There's other oddities too, like for example, NeoFetch wasn't included in the default repos. I had to use KAOS's version of the AUR with a custom tool to get it. Why? I don't know. And also, why doesn't this version of OBS work? Again, I don't know. 
Actually, that's not entirely true. I noticed that I wasn't able to select NVENC as the encoder, so I thought my NVIDIA drivers didn't get installed, which is weird because I remember during the Welcome app, I thought I installed them, and uh, it did install them, just the driver and nothing else. So that means like no settings, no CUDA, no nothing. But unfortunately, even after I installed those, it still didn't work. I did get OBS working through Flatpak and Flathub, but I'll save that for the Encore livestream episode. Anyway, let's get into the networking segment, which sucked. With no obvious way of enabling DLNA or Samba, and network discovery not working out of the box, if you wanted to do anything network related, you better be using SSH. My printer wasn't detected out of the box either, though it was easy enough to set up with KDE tool. And talk about easy, my DualShock 4 controller connected as soon as I turned the damn thing on. No fuss or nothing. So how did the super streamlined KAOS fare against Ubuntu, the golden standard? Well, actually it did quite well in the single core department and the multi-core score wasn't half bad either. I'm impressed. I am, however, unimpressed with the fact that I couldn't do the Vulkan test because I wasn't able to install the proper libraries for it. And how was Dirt? Well, I screwed up the very first turn on this track pretty bad and I had to restart, but besides that, I think it played pretty damn good, and the benchmark returned 42 frames a second, which is better than Ubuntu's 38. War Thunder, on the other hand, was underwhelming because the frame rates were a little low and I wasn't able to shake this jackass behind me, so I died pretty early on. The benchmark returned 26 frames a second, which is the same as Ubuntu. GTA 5 was sloppy with lower benchmark frame rate than Ubuntu at 15 frames a second, and the gameplay was a little choppy. Despite the 15 frames, it's not the choppiest we've seen so far, but it's definitely not the greatest either. So I think the most fascinating thing to me about KAOS is how it's managed. It's an independent Linux distro maintained by just regular people like you and me, but if you hit up their website, it's downright classy. And their integration with Community Bridge is quite impressive too. I think it's a shame more people don't use this distro. I think it has a lot of potential. Is the lack of 32-bit libs a drag? Hell yes. But as you can see, you can work around a lot of the problems by using containerized apps like Flatpak or Snaps. I played the games here in the video through Steam from Flatpak, or Flathub, and I'll be streaming the Encore episode from OBS from Flathub as well. KAOS definitely has some flaws like in the networking department and the application selection is a little bit weird too, but in general I think it's a, a pretty good and underrated distro. Is it the best distro? No. Is it a great distro? Eh, maybe. But like I said, it surprises me that so few people have heard of it, and even fewer people have used it. If you use or have used KAOS as your daily driver distro in the past, let me know what you think about it in the comments, I'm curious. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.